it's, it's time to move on. <laughs> wrapping it up, wrapping it up. Wrapping All it right. up. What's, so, the, what's the final story we got for, for everybody today? The, the final story was an article that was produced, uh, put out by CIO Dive, and it is Shadow IT is evolving as businesses sanction more apps. And basically, the the overview of the article, once again, it, the link will be in the show notes. Um, you know, Shadow or Rogue IT, as as others might hear, might refer to it as, um, it's becoming a bigger challenge in today's business environment thanks to the internet and cloud services. You know, because of this and the pandemic induced work from home model, you know, now more than ever, end users are finding and utilizing more programs uh, that work best for them that haven't been sanctioned by the corporate IT department. And so uh, I, I've got a bunch of thoughts on this, but I'll, I'll tee this one up for you first because I know that you've got some firsthand experience. Yeah, uh, this this is a you know rogue and shadow IT is nothing new. If 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 you're in business and no technical you know never had experience running a, a department, I can sit there and say this is a challenge I personally experienced. We there's been times and and this is going back 20 years where all of a sudden out of the blue you would get a, a whole department, if not certain individuals, hey, I need some help with this and find out they just went out and purchased a bunch of equipment and has been using it for, uh, you know, forever. A and there was <laughs> there was a term that we used back in the day, uh, the network Nazi. Uh, end users did not like coming to the IT department because they were getting, you know, they were used to being told no. And IT, IT departments and, and, and in general, had way too much control there there was too much control over the the equipment being used the software applications being used we were not talking about a business driven value it was like they were no kidding you were the technical genius you were the dictator for life of how that stuff worked and and quite frankly i think we're we finally have moved away from this where it's like no we should we're all in this together we should be advisors to that because you're the specialist in marketing, you're the specialist in sales, you're the accountant, you, you know what functions and features you need to do. So we need to collaborate on how to best do this. So one, I'm the, from a technology perspective, we're supporting you to get your job done, not telling you what you can and can't do, because we have our own hangups of Mac versus PC, for instance, or something along that line. <laughs> That's you know, a fun one that I'm sure won't drive many comments back. But to sit there and say, hey, if we work together to sit there and find out. So one, you go, hey, for me to do this job, I need to use QuickBooks. OK, QuickBooks is a common tool. We're familiar with it. But let's say it was I'm using that as an example that we can go then back and do some research on, on a technical and security side to find out what are the weaknesses? How does this need to be properly deployed? That's my job or that's the technical team's job to make sure it's properly deployed, properly deployed in a secure way. And it's mostly and it's, it's the best function for that group of individuals that need to use that. Or you're going to continue to find that the that other areas, if they're not getting that support from the technical team, because it's so easy now, you got quick, going using the QuickBooks example, QuickBooks on the cloud, you don't even have to install anything. It's just a website link. And now you've got all this data transferring back and forth, the most important part anyway, that they can just go do this without your input at all. And it's better yeah. to get that input. input. Uh, I, like you, like you said before, you know, this isn't new. You know, this has been going around for, for quite some time as far as shadow IT or rogue IT <clears throat> within organizations. Um, you know, we did an audit for, for a company, you know, probably about you know, a year and a half, two years ago, but anyway, uh, fairly decent sized organization. And whenever we started off the audit, they said, Hey, we've got 83 known applications that function and run within our organization throughout the different departments. By the time the audit was done, we found 250 additional applications <laughs> wow. that, that were being used wow. that they had no idea. Wow. And so because it's so easy, because we live in this app society where, you know, there's an app for everything, we're used to, well, we'll go to a store. I want to do this. Or, you know, we get advertisements for these different types of apps. And so for end users that are working at home now, that are outside of the the preview and the vision of the IT gatekeepers, so to speak, it's easy for them to add new things. And so where, where I think this changes or, or what needs to happen, you know, now we're talking to, you know, the CIOs and the CISOs out there uh, and the CTOs, you know, you guys need to be more in tune and 
work with all the functional areas of the business because you need to understand, like you just said, John, these guys, we, we need to, as, as IT professionals and leaders, we need to understand the workflow of the organization and every department mm -hmm. and how everything moves in between so that we make sure that we're, we're, we're that open door of how can we help you utilize technology to do your job better? And we become that resource and conduit rather than the gatekeeper that says, no, we should be the guys that we should be the facilitators. That's the better word. Yeah. Much better word. I want to give you the example that, again, AJ and I prep for these shows. We go over the articles. So we kind of loosely know what we're talking about. But I gave him an example of an app that I was loosely. loosely. <laughs> Key word. Uh, but a, a, an example of, of, uh, of something I was looking into for a program I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking to launch. And it was all about creating templates and stuff like that. But the short story was, I knew what functionality I was looking for. These guys may have had it. But before I could go and say, yep, you're the solution, I had a list of security questions that I needed to ask them and get answers to before I knew it was sound. You know, and in my case, the requirements were the data center was going to have to be located in the United States. I needed to know that how, how the data was encrypted how the data was also segmented away from their own internal support staff where yes i know they run the back end it may there may be times i if something broke i need to get them and they have access but not without my you know explicit or, or written approval with that authorization type of stuff. Yeah. exactly so i needed to know that and that's the type of dialogue that needs to happen in other companies regardless of the function I, you know you don't you know i'm not going to tell you you can't do that that's part of your job but if these guys, and unfortunately, they never got back to me in the, in the example that I was using, but if they had and said, hey, we've got all this stuff, I would have bought their product. My guess is they didn't, well, and that's probably why they didn't. But, the, but, but again, these are the conversations that the technology and the cyber teams can get involved in to help facilitate that stuff before you bring another attack surface vector, sur, uh, uh, surface vector into the organization. And, and I think that's the big thing, you know, for, for the, the business executives out there and the leaders that are, that are tuning in, you know, here, this is the thing that you have to understand is that from the non-technical people, the end users and everybody else who's not in this IT cybersecurity space, you guys look at functionality. And from a business owner's perspective, that's the way I look at it. Yep. I, I look at functionality. For what, what can I introduce? What technology can I implement that's going to make us more efficient, that's going to streamline our processes so that we can do more with less? business perspective, understand that. But there's a caveat to that, is that making sure that as you're looking for what's going to make you more effective and more efficient, that you're also understanding what risk that you're assuming. So make so having your, your security guy in there to ask those questions of, cool, this seems like a great product, but where does information reside? Yep. What are what what are the what, what parameters are in place to protect our data? What do we have access to? What do they have access to? What can we limit? Asking those questions because the end users and most business executives, you're not thinking that way. You're thinking from a functionality standpoint, which is great. You need to always look to be inventing and, and finding new ways to to do things better. But at the same time, don't walk blindly and don't and, and miss the fact that while you're incorporating these new solutions, this new technology, that you're increasing your threat vector and, and your, your attack surface. And so you need to understand exactly how that's going to change your digital risk. So I, I think spot on right there. Yeah, and keep the communication open because that's the thing. You don't hundred percent. You don't want to have it's the only way you beat this. Yeah, it is absolutely the only way you beat this. If not, you're gonna you're gonna end up with another situation. And I'm sure at some point we'll be talking, you know, we'll find uh, stories about, again, more stories about, I thought I had 12 programs and you find out they got 1200, <laughs> you got 1200 programs right. because <laughs> people don't want to talk to each other, you know, in, inside and in, in communication. And, and that is the key is getting the teams to work smoothly with the, with this little friction between there. There shouldn't, you know, it's, you know, hopefully office politics doesn't come into play with with these things when you're talking about really trying to drive business value through technology having the security piece in there to protect yourself and